because it's just I love hurling. The speed and the thrills of it and to say that a man can control a flying hurling ball and in a, a, a flick of an eye put it flying over the bar or into the back of the net. For it's bound to rise the men out of their graves, isn't it? <laughs> It's a marvellous game, it's special. People from all over the world are attracted to it when they see it. It's probably the skill level involved is very high, uh, the speed at which it's played, the ball control that's needed, the bravery that's needed. Standing in the square that says you would as a forward like with the uh, uh, 70 be about to be lobbed in or something, there's nothing I think to approach to sort of gushing up blood to the brain in anticipation of that and the man-to-man -man combat. The caressing of the schlitter with the hurley, if you want to look at it as that, there is a tremendous satisfaction in handling the hurley and the skill of driving that ball. I should took it out of my life. I don't know what would happen at all. I don't know what would do. It's everything. It's the greatest field game in the world. Hurling is the fastest field game in the world. Even those who see it played for the first time marvel at the way play switches from end to end and the skill of the players in controlling the scudding ball. Dedicated followers of the game, who are able to appreciate these skills more fully, store incidents in their mind's eye to be savoured again in tranquillity. Nobody knows how the game originated in Ireland. It is older than written history. Ku Holland is reputed to have played it as a boy, walking the Cooley Mountains and hurling the ball ahead of him as he travelled. This folkloric event is commemorated by an annual competition held in this area, known as an Pokfada, in which hurlers from all over Ireland try to cover the set course in the least number of strokes. The heroic image prevails, Great hurlers in modern times are referred to as being in the tradition of Coo Holland. Men like Christy Ring of Cork or Mick Mackey of Limerick, who were capable of changing the course of the game with unique individual right himself, skills. Now to the right wing, just in under the Hogan stand. Ballads were composed about Ring in his lifetime. Right in when he died, huge crowds came to pay their respects. The Taoiseach of the day, Jack Lynch, himself a hurler who played with Ring, spoke his emotional tribute at the graveside in Cloyne. As long as young men will match their hunting skills against each other on Ireland's green fields, as long as young boys swing their commands for the sheer thrill of the feel and the tingle in their fingers of the impact of ash on leather, as long as hurling is played, the story of Christy Ring will be told, and that will be forever. Like other elements in the national culture, hurling came close to extinction. By the end of the 19th century, it seemed to those who cared that it could not survive in its disorganised state. Michael Cusick from the Burn and County Clare resolved to regularise its rules and restore its strength. It was one of his principal reasons for founding the GAA in 1884. After a hundred years, it still remains a minority sport nationally. Gaelic football is played in every county in Ireland, even in places like Kilkenny, Tipperary and Cork, where hurling has more popular appeal. Still the game lived on, even in small isolated areas, far from what are now its strongholds, the most isolated being Bally Castle in North East Antrim. Uh, our own club was formed in 1907 here and prior to that uh, there are stories of hurling or a type of hurling uh, been played uh, on the beach at uh, White Park Bay which is uh, slightly north of here. My grandfather then would have been playing on the championship teams in 1913-1914 uh, and uh, 
the next championship winning teams here was in 1933 uh, and on that team my father's eldest brother my uncle Eddie would have played uh, in the championship teams from 44 to 54 uh, my uncles Paddy, uh, Brendan and Dermot would have played and in the championship teams from 1964 up to date uh, myself uh, my brothers Eddie, Desmond and Brian would all have played and featured uh, in, in championship teams here. Across the North Channel in Scotland, a game called Shinty, Kamanacht in Gaelic, is played. It is in fact an old form of hurling and was brought to Scotland by the Irish invaders. It is played mainly on the ground but the stick is shaped so as to give the ball a lift when struck off the ground. Attempts have been made to play games between Irish hurlers and Scottish shinty players under compromise rules. However, the similarities have almost been cancelled by differences which place shinty closer to hockey than to hurling. So far, International matches have not been successful, but attempts to achieve a better compromise continue. The fact that the historical hurling areas are so clearly defined, as well as the fact that hurling has not spread significantly beyond these areas, led people to believe that unless you grew up with the game, you had no hope of mastering it. There is, however, another side to this assumption. I don't really go along with the traditional background. You know, in, in Tipperary they say you have to be from mid Tipperary. And I think if you, if you look back, Babs Keaton wasn't from a traditional background. He was from a place where there was mainly football played. I myself have, was from a place that there was mainly a football background. So I think it's quite possible that a person in any part of the country could become a hurler with proper coaching and with proper ambition, I suppose, if you like, could become a good hurler. Nicholas English is one of the most stylish and effective forwards in the modern game. Tipperary's revival in the 80s owes much to his accuracy from play and from freeze. His background in football was obvious and very useful when he scored a famous goal against Cork in the Munster final in 1987 by dribbling the ball with his feet after he had lost his stick. In my thinking, there's no such thing as traditional counties. There are counties that have won all Ireland's, and there are counties that are favourite to win all Ireland's. But that shouldn't stop Clare, it shouldn't stop Dublin, it shouldn't stop Waterford, it shouldn't stop Leash coming up. And if they do the right work, and if their basics are right, and if they have the same skills as Tipperary, or the same skills as Kilkenny, or the same skills as Galway, or the same skills as Cork, then they should beat them. Try and practice catching them when they're hitting it back up, catch it cleanly. That the basic skills of hurling can be broken down, demonstrated and taught was shown in the first instructional film in colour made with the great master, Christy Ring. As part of that film, the camera was kept on Ring during the National League final of 1960 against Tipperary, played in Cork. At half-time, having scored two goals and three points, he said to the film crew as he left the field, Sorry lads, that's the best I could do for you. Tipperary won but Christy Ring displayed many of his skills as well as his boyish delight